GM Cosmonauts, I'm finally back. Uh, it feels like an eternity, even though it's only been two or three weeks. Um, but yeah, Cosmos has been a huge, huge success. I hope some of you got to see the live stream, which was also um, broadcasted here on this YouTube channel. Um, so I want to make this video today to give you a brief recap and summary of Cosmoverse. Also, we had a little bit of a relief rally in the past few days after months of negative downward pressure and everyone just being super emotional, super um, negative, and the market just drying out. So what this really is all about, how Cosmos was, um, and my thoughts about specifically the Cosmos ecosystem for the next couple months is what you're gonna be hearing in today's video. <laughs> Now let's start with Cosmos. I actually want to talk about some of the projects that really stood out to me and some of them that have actually also been surprising to me. Um, in fact, we had everyone in Cosmos at Cosmoverse, at least most of the projects, most of the founders and builders, um, and also some projects outside of Cosmos, right? For example, Polkadot was there, um, represented primarily by Composable, but also we had a speaker and people from the Web3 Foundation, which is basically the interchain foundation equivalent in Polkadot, and you can also see DYDX um, had a strong present uh, presence, and also Terra, um, which this was actually one of the surprises to me. Terra, um, they have really really good vibes, a lot of um, builder spirit, and their new CEO um, Chris Armani is a very 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 um, well suited guy for that position, and he has just good vibes, good visions, and um, a strong uh, mentality that also resonates with a lot of Cosmos people. So this is really cool to see that all these projects are now uh, reunited um, through Cosmoverse. Um, from that angle, actually, it has been a huge success. Obviously, the Cosmos Hub is the lead sponsor. Uh, we had a lot of um, good conversations, a lot of discussions. All the core teams got to talk about some ideas, about M&As, about... Um, ways how the Cosmos Hub can acqu uh, um, acquire other protocols, potentially other teams. Um, obviously, these are just ideas. And I know the community, some of you guys have um, very mixed feelings about that. Um, for me personally, actually, I'm in the same boat. I actually have mixed feelings about some of these ideas. Um, but I think it's cool to talk about this, right? And to use Cosmos also as a platform to announce or discuss um, with the public some of these ideas. So that's the whole purpose. And I really think also it's the biggest strength of Cosmos is that there is not one core entity that dictates the roadmap, that announces the partnership, that announces this or that. In fact, it's a very bottom-up ecosystem where the community can provide feedback and it's actually heard. And if the majority of the community disagrees, um, it just doesn't go through it, right? Because it all goes through on-chain governance. If you look at all the other ecosystems in crypto, literally all of them, there is no such open governance framework that has such high engagement and interaction and uh, voices from the community. So it is really cool to see. Um, also, I think Osmosis and the Hub um, are more and more aligned. Um, Sunny, in fact, uh, came to me during the conference and said, man, I'm really bullish on Atom. Um, throughout the conference days, I got more and more bullish. Why? Because he sees Atom as um, the ultimate um, money in crypto um, mixed with um, the use case for governance. So this is really interesting. He made also a Twitter spaces recently where he went a bit deeper on that, but he hasn't formally shared his real thoughts on this. So I'm curious to hear Sunny's um, detailed thoughts on how he believes Atom could be a top three cryptocurrency eventually after Bitcoin and Ethereum, because that's actually what he said. Um, but nevertheless, those are just some of the uh, things we had, also Quasar had a strong presence as the colleague sponsors. Um, obviously, I'm as crypto seed, I'm also an advisor for them. Um, and now I think moving forward, I'm very much looking forward to um, talk about um, the content roadmap um, and strategy to also position Quasar, um, not just inside of Cosmos, but also to onboard users um, from either Web2 or just from other crypto ecosystems as well. So this is really cool to see. Um, also, another thing that has been announced um, as of me uh, personally is that I'm also an advisor now for Composable Finance. Um, you have heard them on my channel here um, already well over a year, year and a half ago um, when we first had Bringer on. And um, they're doing God's work by bringing IBC outside of Cosmos. You can watch all the talks here. 
um, day one, two, and three on the customer's YouTube channel. And we're also uploading each keynote now individually here on our YouTube channel at Cosmoverse. So you can watch that comfortably here. Now, let's talk a little bit about the market. Also refresh real quick. The market, in fact, um, looks very, very interesting. And why is that? Because Bitcoin is uh, around 30K and um, it's been um, interesting to see, um, first of all, how Bitcoin reacted recently when the ETF announcement by Cointelegraph was um, announced, which turned out to be a fake news, but um, Bitcoin immediately went up 12%, 10 or 12%, right? Um, so that was here a couple of days ago. Um, actually, it doesn't really show up here. I think it was this one here. Um, on the 20th of uh, October, which just shut up immediately, 10, 12% to 30K. And then it bounced a little bit. But since then, it actually recovered and it's now back up at 30K uh, roundabout. So this shows us a couple of things. It shows us that, that Bitcoin is still not dead. Um, some of the altcoins have also um, made some moves. Uh, Aptos Chainlink has had a quite uh, decent run. Uh, Third Chain as the first Cosmos coin. The Cosmos Hub is still around $6.60, $6.50. Um, but I think if we look at the weekly, we also see that um, especially Ejective has been just up only um, around $9, which is cool to see. Um, but yeah, it shows crypto is not that, number one. And number two, it shows that an ETF actual announcement is going to bring in a lot of money, a lot of liquidity, a lot of eyeballs, a lot of credibility also for the entire space. So if we now look more closer into Cosmos specifically, and we can actually filter here, let's say on a weekly, um, the um, price movements here, Flix had, had, has had a crazy run. They actually also made big announcements at Cosmoverse and they have been a close, close partner of Cosmoverse. And I think people just see what they're doing every year with customers and all the other things that they're doing, but especially at Cosmoverse. Also banned 30% and injective. Um, also Sommelier has had a 15% increase. So that's cool to see. And if we look at, um, actually this is, now, what we actually should look at um, instead of USD terms, because in USD, things look quite nice for many of these chains uh, in the past week. And there's obviously also a lot of losers, but um, there's a lot of green here. But if you flip to Bitcoin, it looks different, right? And I think eventually the goal for holding altcoins is to outperform Bitcoin, not necessarily to make money in USD, but to actually um, outperform Bitcoin. Um, if your end goal is to really be in crypto, you see the vision, you want to um, be full-time in this for the long run and you want to exit the fiat system, um, then the goal should also be to eventually accumulate as much Bitcoin as possible or even better, outperform Bitcoin. Also, what I want to talk about is some of the upcoming launches, right? And one of the most exciting upcoming launches is in fact DYDX, which is literally weeks if not days away so dydx is launching extremely soon and what are they launching they're launching their sovereign cosmos based layer one blockchain moving away from ethereum so they originally launched on ethereum then they moved away to an ethereum l2 and now they're moving away from ethereum l2 and launched their own cosmos chain um, so this is an interesting path they took and um if you want to see how impactful this could be, just look at um, the fees they're generating, right? Um, and we're now in this area where um, we want to get away, especially in Cosmos, from inflationary incentives um, focused on real yield um, generation, right? We have Kujira, Sommelier um, that are already doing a great job at that. Obviously, Osmosis also has some decent um, protocol revenue. But if we look at what DYDX is bringing to the table, I already prepared this here, um, comparing the fees they're generating relative to Osmosis and the Cosmos Hub, you can really see that DYDX is 10X of Osmosis, 100X of the Cosmos Hub. So they're generating 200 uh, here, 400K um, in fees per day. Obviously there's no direct value accrual for Atom, um, but my thesis is that um, since DYDX will make use of native USDC through Noble. And if Noble eventually becomes a consumer chain on a Cosmos hub, this will indirectly accrue a lot of value for Atom. So the more demand DYDX has for native USDC on Noble, which then is in a consumer chain, 
the more important it also is um, for all parties, for all teams, for all communities, that Atom is secure and valuable, right? Because if Noble is secured by Atom and DYDX relies on USDC from Noble, that means Atom needs to be a very, very high market cap, have a very high economic security. So DYX is, is a big deal. Also, Celestia is going to be a very big deal in my personal opinion. And as far as I understand, they are also just weeks away. I don't think days, but definitely weeks. Um, so they will still be launching this year. And what they actually did is um, they also recently announced an airdrop um, where users of the Cosmos Hub, so Atom Stakers and Osmos Stakers, are eligible. Um, you can actually now go on their site. I'm just going to find the link. It's called genesis.celestia.org. And you can right now connect. I hope you did claim your um, airdrop because the claiming period is now closed, but you can connect your wallet here. Uh, what do you use? Um, Atom wallet, Osmo wallet, or even Ethereum people, or if you're a developer, um, you were eligible and you can connect your wallet. Even Leap is integrated here. Um, and for some reason, it doesn't work right now for me here. Um, but then it will show you up how many uh, TIA tokens you eventually got. Because yeah, I think this is going to be a big one. And if we go on Helix, which is on Injective, Helix um, Future Trading, um, they actually already listed TIA. They listed Celestia here. And um, it's currently trading at around $2. So um, well, I should give you an indication. Um, I think if you want to hear a more deeper dive on Celestia, um, I will definitely make a video around their uh, mainnet launch. So that's coming up um, quite soon, um, as far as I understand. And um, then we will learn everything about Celestia, tokenomics, uh, TIA, and also my personal views. So what is my feelings about the short term in crypto overall? Because I understand right now, people are very frustrated. Atom is doing lows. Osmo has been bleeding really bad. Um, there are some coins like Kujira, like um, now Omniflix that have had good runs, good bounces. Injective has been killing it, to be quite honest. Um, but yeah, Atom, Osmo, they don't really seem to, to do anything. So what does it mean? Well, in my opinion, the bear market is just a bear market. It's really cruel. It makes people hate the space. It makes you want to leave the space. It makes you just want to to not look at it anymore. It's like it makes you really frustrated. And I totally understand that. I've been going through this 2018, 2019. And I can tell you, 2019 has been the driest and most boring year in crypto. It's been horrible. Um, I started doubting the industry. I started doubting everything. But I was said, like, this technology is here to stay. It's the first time in the history of humanity that we're separating money from state. And as long as you understand that fundamental principle and you do your research, you're up to date, you obviously also have to make sure the team has enough uh, runway, that there's no um, major dispute that distracts the whole team dynamic and the whole team cohesion um, or anything that would kill the project. Um, as long as that's not the case, um, I think you should be fine. I think a lot of these coins will recover if there's a strong roadmap to come out of the spare market stronger, right? And you have a lot of teams that are just relentlessly building right now in the spare market. While the price goes down, the quality of the project goes up. And eventually this gap becomes so big that this actually becomes a 100x opportunity. And that's really what you want to focus on in a bear market. Uh, that's what I did relentlessly in 2019, early 2020. I remember the COVID crash early 2020, where everybody was like, that was the final step to get people out of the market. That's where I really doubled down, stayed up all night on that precise day and did my homework, did my research. So I hope you don't get shaken out. That's really the worst thing you can do is now leave the industry at the end of the bear market. But I also understand right now it's probably the most tempting to leave the in industry because it's just been going down for two, two and a half years. And it is really um, important to stick around uh, and to not give up and to be always reminded of why we're here, why we're doing this, why we're excited about it. Sure, the money aspect is also important. We all want to make money. Um, I want to get back to making crazy amounts of money by just staking my coins, by generating ideally also real protocol revenue and not just inflated um, rewards. Um, but I'm very, very confident that those times will come back. Um, and every cycle, every four years, this window might get smaller and smaller and smaller because also the cake gets um, 
bigger, but it also gets more diluted to more people, more entities, more organizations. Um, so I don't think there's um, an endless amount of time for people to make crazy amounts of money in crypto to be very realistic. But I do think the next bull run, which is happening um, sooner than people might think. Why? Because the ETF is coming. The ETF is coming um, latest by March. And once the ETF gets approved, which means BlackRock, Fidelity, all the big um, uh, all the big, big funds, if they get their ETFs approved, it opens the liquidity gates massively. And that will cause a massive altcoin season that will bring 30, 50, 100, thousand X returns, which we've seen over and over in history. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised about that. Um, and what I also see is closing um, in a bear market, people tend to overreact and to be overly bearish while it's actually the time where you're supposed to be bullish. Well, on the flip side, in a bull run, everyone's just overconfident. They think they know everything. And they also think that we will never see a bear market again. And trust me, this will happen in the next bull run as well. Um, but right now, people are really, really humbled. And you can really tell that also at customers, talking to some people um, that I know have been really, really loud a couple of months ago. They're now quieter. They're not chilling. I think that's healthy, right? Nature is healing. People get humbled. Um, and that's really um, a natural a natural pathway. So thanks for watching this. I think if you're watching my videos at this point, um, you are going to make it. Why? Because you are around. You are doing your homework. You are learning. You are listening. You're, you want to absorb information. Um, I continue to do this to this day. I watch a lot of content on YouTube, on Twitter, um, and I'm very, very happy to actually be back now after a lot of travels in the past three months to be back in my home base um, in Dubai and just grinding being up to date on everything because now is the time. I give it three to five months max because then we also have the halving coming up in May and we will definitely see a pre-halving rally um, for Bitcoin at least. Um, but yeah, the halving paired with the ETF, um, that is just the perfect lineup for the bull run to come back. Um, obviously, there's also micro stuff involved. I don't want to get involved. Uh, I don't want to talk about this right now because this would be too long for, the, for today's video. Um, but I also have a lot of thoughts about um, about that and how or why it's actually not that important in my perspective. But yeah, that's maybe something for another time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Expect more content here. So be subscribed, put the bell that you get notified for new content, and I'll see you in the next one.